Hello everyone. Welcome. It's 11 a.m. here live and it is time for our heart healthy nutrition class here online this week. The first Wednesday every month is the heart healthy nutrition class. So here we are. Um, welcome if you're watching live or if you're watching the recorded version later on. Welcome to you as well. Uh, you may have gotten my email this morning. If you're in our email lists, you get all the emails. Um, and I said that our topic today is saturated fats, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, so that is what we will be talking about today. I have my cheat sheets <laughs> that I am going to go through for our topic today. Please, if you have questions, comments, concerns, um, let me know in the comment section of this video. I, it, you know, it's strange to just talk to myself <laughs> in these videos. So I love when people interact back, when you ask questions or have comments, um, it makes it a little bit more like a class. So I encourage any and all of that since we can't be in person. I'm gonna get a quick sip of water, which there's not very much left in here. And we will get started. All right, so this is Heart Healthy Nutrition class. So our topics are about heart healthy topics. As I said, today we're talking about saturated fats. So let's get going. I am gonna be kind of reading a bit just because it's easier for me to stay on task and make sure I say everything that I wanna say. So don't mind me if I keep looking down and back up, okay? Okay, so there are three main categories of fats that we eat. And I will say a disclaimer, I'm going to say fat and fats a lot in this class. Um, I think I counted 46 uh, times in what I just typed. So I'm going to say it a lot. I'll probably be really self-conscious of how many times I'm saying it, but that is what we're talking about today. Here we go. There are three main types of fats that we eat. Trans fats, unsaturated fats, and saturated fats. Today we'll, we will be focusing on saturated fats, but first I think it's very important to talk about the other two types as well. So first, trans fats. Trans fats are the type that we should avoid completely. These are truly the bad fats for, uh, for eating in our diet. Our bodies do not need trans fats and they, sh they can actually be harmful to our health when we eat them. In fact, the FDA is requiring food manufacturers to phase out the use of trans fats in the United States in food sources and the World Health Organization, or WHO, is working to have trans fats removed from all global food sources by 2023. That's how bad they are for us. <laughs> trans fats were primarily found in certain types of fried foods, processed foods, um, processed snacks, and baked goods. Thanks to the FDA and WHO, though, trans fats have become much less common in our foods. Once in a while, you might find some lurking in foods, certain packaged items or um, snack uh, bakery type of items. Um, however, if you read the ingredients on a food label and see the words partially hydrogenated oil, that is a sneaky name for trans fat and you should not eat that food. So a lot of packages these days will say uh, on the front of their label, they say no partially hydrogenated oils. That's them telling you that they have removed or don't have trans fat in their foods anymore or they, maybe they never did. But if you do see that name, partially hydrogenated oil, in an ingredient list, it does have some degree of trans fat in it. Companies can get away with having some trans fat in their food if it is less than 0.5 grams per serving. So food really could have trans fat in it, but we are trying to do away with it 
in our country and in the world. Not necessarily does every food follow that yet, so just be mindful. Moving on now, the opposite end of the spectrum are the unsaturated fats. We do need some amount of fat for our overall health, and these are the good fats that we should choose. Within this unsaturated fat category, you'll typically see them divided into monounsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fats. Those names are quite a mouthful, <laughs> I know. Um, you'll sometimes see those divided in a food label. So if you look at the back, um, for an example, like a jar of peanut butter, we'll typically have it divided out. You'll see the total fat, and then you'll see saturated fat, which we'll talk about later, and then you'll see monounsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fat, usually list listed out separately. And those two are the good fats that we are glad to have in our foods. The mono and polyunsaturated fats are the heart healthy fats and are primarily only found in plant-based sources. There are a few exceptions. Some good sources of unsaturated fats are avocados, all types of nuts and seeds, extra virgin olive oil, ground flax seeds, chia seeds, any of those seeds, any of the nuts, um, olives as well, those plant fat sources. Oysters and fatty fish, such as tuna, mackerel, salmon, also contain the polyunsaturated fats. Um, but based on the latest research, I do recommend choosing plant-based sources of fat rather than the animal-based ones for overall best health even though they do, um, these fish seafood type sources do contain some of the good fats. I personally recommend choosing the animal or the, uh, the plant ones. Okay. Um, now we're moving on to the saturated fats, which is what we really are focusing on even more so in today's topic. So within the good to bad spectrum of fats, um, unsaturated fats on the good side, and then trans fats on the bad side. Saturated fats fall somewhere in the middle, but more so toward the bad side. Uh, saturated fats have been researched a lot over many, many years, and yet there's still conflicting evidence on what their true impact is on heart health. However, what we do know is that intake of saturated fats does cause an increase in LDL cholesterol levels. Uh, LDL is otherwise known as the bad cholesterol. Um, LDL, uh, excuse me, saturated fats can also increase inflammation in the body, which isn't good either. And both of these factors may increase your risk of heart disease and stroke, neither of which we want to have. Some studies have even indicated that saturated fats can have negative impacts on our mental health, our appetites, our metabolism, um, so how well, how quickly, how efficiently we're burning calories, so that's related to weight management. More research is needed on those areas though. So which foods contain saturated fat? Animal-based foods are the ones that contain saturated fat. Beef, lamb, pork, poultry with skin, lard, butter, cheese, cream, and whole and reduced dairy, uh, dairy products, so milk, yogurt, sour cream, cottage cheese, those all contain saturated fat. Uh, there are a few plant-based sources as well though. Coconut oil, palm oil, and palm kernel oil. So the tropical, we call them the tropical oils. Those also contain saturated fats. However, the body may react slightly differently to these plant-based saturated fats than from the animal sources. Without getting too sciencey, <laughs> they are slightly different in their chemical structures. So the body does uh, react to them slightly differently. But the bottom line is they are saturated fats and that they can still increase our LDL cholesterol. I'm gonna take another drink of water. 
Any questions so far? Just let me know. For heart health, the American Heart Association does recommend limiting our intake of saturated fat to less than 6% of our daily calories. What does that look like? If you eat 2000 calories per day, which is quoted as the American recommended diet, which probably most people don't eat, but if you eat 2000 calories per day, the maximum that should come from saturated fat is 120 calories or about 13 grams of saturated fat. That's what the equivalent is in grams of fat. That may sound like a lot maybe, but in food terms, approximately 13 grams of saturated fat, not even total fat, 13 grams of saturated fat is found in each of these following examples. So one tablespoon of coconut oil, of the, that tropical oil, one tablespoon contains 13 grams of saturated fat. Two tablespoons of butter contain that amount. Two ounces of cheddar cheese, so usually that's one slice is one ounce, so two slices of cheddar cheese. Three cups of whole milk, um, eight ounces of ground beef, if it's the 85% lean. Um, there's much more lean types of beef out there these days, of course, and those will have less saturated fat in them, but they still do contain saturated fat. Um, I even looked it up today, ice cream, like a typical vanilla, ice cream, which is the basic ice cream, that um, a cup and a half contains about the 13 grams of saturated fat, not even total fat, but saturated fat. So there is a lot of saturated fat in these foods that the typical American diet contains. Um, the plant foods don't contain nearly that amount. So in a summary, eliminating all fat in the diet really isn't the answer. Our bodies do need fat. The recommendation for dietary fat is 20 to 35% of our total daily calories, and that's a good amount of fat. Many processes in our bodies rely on the fat we eat to function. We need to eat fat. However, the types of fat really can make a difference. So I want you to think about choosing the healthier ones. So the mono unsaturated fats, the poly unsaturated fats, and less of the bad fats. So the trans fat and the saturated fats. I want you to eat more avocados, more nuts, seeds, and then less of the beef, butter, cheese, ice cream. That was the end. <laughs> I didn't want to overwhelm you on here, these videos. I know it's not really interactive. And so me just talking to you for an entire hour or even a half an hour is kind of long. So I try to keep these a little bit shorter, give you the really important information. Um, and I really want to know for next time, what topics are you interested on related to heart healthy nutrition? I wanna teach the topics that you wanna learn about that you need more information on. So let me know in the comments. I love getting comments on here and I am happy to reply back. I see all of them. Uh, next week's class is the Carb Smart class. So we're talking about carbohydrates. Stay tuned for the specific topic for next week's class. This class will be again the first Wednesday of September. I believe it's September too. So I will see you then. Thank you all so much for watching live or if you're watching later on the recorded version. Um, again, let me know any comments, questions in the comment section. Bye.